The Americans said today that they had evidence of President Assad planning another chemical attack and that it would be punished if it happened. This is a measure of the strangely intense times that we're living through in international affairs. The global role of the US is in flux. Are they keeping out of wars or getting into them? Meanwhile, Russia is flexing its influence and the EU is working how to respond to it all. A good time to hold a confer conference on international security as the Centre for Policy Studies did today. Among the speakers there was the former Chief of the Defence Staff, the professional head of the Armed Services, General Lord Richards. I went to meet him at the event in the City of London to get his take on where the world is. But first, should Britain support the US in any retaliation against a Syrian government chemical attack? I think the British reaction should be supportive. Um, as I think uh, Sir Michael Fallon said, it should be proportionate. I'm not quite certain what that means, but basically we should be there in support. I, I think the key thing here, and it's nice to see a bit of statesmanship or statecraft at work, um, is that they don't really want to do it. What they're saying is we're happy to work with you against ISIS, but don't, for goodness sake, make the mistake of using chemical weapons again because all bets are then off. And if we felt the intelligence was adequate, would you think we should actually join in, for example, punishment attacks on Assad? Yes, I do. Um, uh, at a time when the relationship with America is probably more important than ever for us, certainly no less important than it's been at other critical times in our history, I think it's very important that we are alongside America if they ask us and they want us to be there. Uh, beyond the moral imperative to demonstrate to the man he is not going to use chemical weapons to get a, away with it. So there's been a dilemma, I mean, in, in, in our foreign policy, American foreign policy, about which of the two objectives, defeating ISIS or defeating Assad, is the more important? I mean, in your view, it should be ISIS, I yes, think. Yes, and always has been. There's no doubt that uh, the American focus is ISIS. Now, they will then say, well, once ISIS is defeated, who knows? Assad might be, and his future might then be on the table. But I think it's unequivocal in the American, uh, in the American thing. It is definitely ISIS. They want to work with Russia to get rid of ISIS as quickly as possible, and they don't want the Syrians to interrupt that. Right. Do you think on Syria we can really work with Putin? I mean, we should work with Putin? I think it should be part of a bigger deal. Um, there are things that um, we could do with Putin that would be part of a deal that might be involved with Iran. Uh, the, the Iranians would very much not like the Americans and, Brit and uh, uh, Russians to get closer together um, because they're very happy with uh, Russia being clearly on their side and they don't want to, be, to see their great ally, Russia, being drawn towards the West an orbit. So. In a way, as you speak, <coughs> one can sense your frustration with the lack of global leadership at mm. the moment. I mean, you're not a fan of Trump, I wouldn't have thought. You're not a particular fan of Putin, strong man no. as he is. Um, but who is who is the sort of who is the sort of global leader that you admire? Well, I've been banging on at this conference about the need for statesmanship in the absence of it, um, uh, and I do think we're at a point in in world history where there are all sorts of risks. I mean, I think we don't understand what I call today, perhaps wrongly, the anarchic effect. I'm not necessarily thinking negatively here of social media, uh, of the undermining of the state because the state is no longer fully trusted by populations. Uh, how are we going to deal with that? Uh, because if everyone believes whatever they read on social media, which may be completely incorrect or distorted, where's society pulled in which, what direction? Uh, so climate change, international crime, mass migration. There's all sorts of things that make me think the world is in a very troubled state and needs leadership and needs what in the past people like me would have called a grand strategy. Where you uh, try and solve multiple problems at the same time because often there are deals to be done course. when you bring them all together. Together, that's exactly the point and none of that's happening it's very transactional at the yeah. moment and I think you know it may take 10 years it's going to be difficult take a lot of will panel of leadership but to answer your question I think President Xi is a statesman now is is one of our deductions that uh, countries uh, democratic countries no longer can breed statesmen because they're beset by near short-term political requirements if that's so that's very worrying how worried should we be in the UK because there is a sense at the moment we're under attack we've had terrorist attacks we've had other the, the Grenfell disaster so there's a, a feeling of a nation that's been through a lot 
We have a weakened government uh, with a prime minister who's, who's limping along in a, a minority administration. Um, and we have, you know, to put it mildly, uh, an, uns an unsettled status mm. with regard to our relationship with Europe and an awkward relationship with the guy running the United States. Mm. I mean, we, we, we're floating without an anchor here, aren't we, in a big ocean, and where are we going to land? Well, I think, again, um, while I was thinking internationally of the need for strategy and strategic leaders and states, which are, there is absolutely no doubt this country is crying out for that sort of leadership. Um, now, I, I'm a crossbencher in the House of Lords, and I'm very careful, or I try to be careful, not to get drawn too much into party political issues, but as far as I'm concern we have a prime minister uh, that's within our constitution uh, you know her deal with the DUP people may not like but it gives her uh, the majority she needs I, I think you know echoing one or two other people we really now must you know get behind the prime minister uh, if there is a lot of uh, debate and discord over brexit that alone let alone all the other things that we've just been talking about means that this country is in a pretty sorry state at a critical point in its history uh, probably more so than you know the other nations we've been talking about at this congress uh, this conference but you're not a fan of the eu you called them arrogant i think and sort of implied that they'd overreached themselves this morning what should the British be thinking in terms of security in the relationship with Europe? Because the Europeans are beginning to think those mm. Americans are perhaps not quite the, the allies we thought. They will go it alone a little mm. more. Uh, NATO becomes weakened and then where are we left? Um, clearly our security is completely dependent on the security of Europe as a whole right. so uh, NATO remains critical and if there are European leaders that are silly enough to uh, disentangle them in themselves in some way from America that would be uh, a, a huge uh, problem, uh, a lesson learned, you know, bitterly uh, through the 20th century. You don't do that. You need America to be locked into the Zurich of Europe. Lord Richard, thank you very much. Thank you.